I'm traveling to Japan, so I thought I'll take this opportunity to make a short video on the things that I feel that you might want to keep in mind if you're planning to go to Japan to do Kendo. Luggage. If you want to travel with your Shinai and your Bogo together, you might want to consider using a golf cover bag. I will leave a link down in the description box below. I already made a video about this, but most airlines consider the golf cover bag as a regular check bag, as long as it's under 50 pounds of weight. And some airlines get a little bit sticky with this and they don't want anything else but golf equipment. So for a lot of the airlines, you might want to say that you have golf equipment inside of the golf bag and it shouldn't be a problem. This is, you know, I'm not saying that this is what I do all the time, but when it comes to your bogu bag, once you're there, my recommendation is to get a backpack style bogu bag because they're gonna be a lot of stairs, a lot of walking and so on. You don't want to have one over the shoulder, the wheels. Personally, I don't like the wheels, so my recommendation is always get the backpack one. When it comes to the kendo part, I have two recommendations and they might be a little bit general. One of them is make a plan and the second one is take as much notes as you can. When I say make a plan, I don't mean about planning where you're going to visit. We'll talk about that in a second but I mean, make a plan of the things that you want to learn while you're there. Don't get me wrong, you're gonna be able to improve just by being around so much Kendo, but having something in mind that you want to work on will give you the opportunity to ask questions about it, pay attention to it when you see it on other people, and also get direct feedback while you're there on this specific topic that you are looking to improve on. About taking notes, the main thing is because if you're gonna do a lot of practices, there's a lot of things that you're going to see that you will love to remember later on, even drills and things that you might want to bring back to your dojo. And if you don't take notes, trust me, with so much stuff going on, most likely you will forget this thing. When it comes to finding places to practice and assuming that you don't know anybody that can get you into a dojo, there's a lot of places where you can find public practices. For example, in Osaka, by the Osaka Castle, there's a practice that happens a few days of the week. You can come in, pay a little fee and join the practice. And those places are great opportunities for you to meet people and possibly getting invitations to go to other dojos. Now, if you would like to get some extra recommendations down in the description box below, there is the link for the Kendo Tips Discord server. If you join it, you can ask for questions of people that are there or being there to give you some suggestions. You can send me a message there and I will try to help you as best as I can. Also, if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel if you would like to keep getting Kendo Tips your way. Now, my next tip, I think is good for regular practices and even when you're visiting dojos around your area while you're there have the right attitude for the dojo always do your best make sure you're trying to meet people and do your best kendo with them be confident but don't be arrogant now this next part i want to talk a little bit about length of stay if you go for two weeks to a month and i think anything under that might be a little bit of a waste because you're not going to be able to see too much so i think for that you just go either kendo or sightseeing but if you're planning to have a mixture between sightseeing and kendo, two weeks to a month, you have to understand that most likely you will be sore a lot. Between going to practices and wanting to go see everything you can, this is going to be exhausted. So please listen to your body, avoid injuries at all costs. Stay hydrated and make sure that you stretch after your practice. I know kendoka don't like to stretch, but please stay safe. I think, especially if you haven't been there, regardless of your length of stay, the best thing you can do is get the JR pass because you're gonna have access to the JR train system and you can travel to a lot of cities with this. And I just think it's very convenient. For a stay of over a month, maybe two or three months, my suggestion is at the beginning, get all the places you want to go visit first, try to find some practices there, but then find a spot where you want to stay, try to meet people. Ideally, you want to try to meet a sensei or get a connection into a dojo where you can be consistent and you can get consistent feedback. On that note, as you're there, remember to have fun, enjoy the practice. Japan has a lot of places to, for you to visit, a lot of good food, a rich culture that you can explore. So please take the time to explore it inside and outside of the dojo. Now, the point for me with this video is to let you know that I want to share as much as possible from this trip with you. So, so please let me know down in the comments what would you like me to share, any questions, or if you have suggestions for me to take over to Japan. Now, if you're here, I know you enjoy Kendo. If you would like to know a little bit about building explosive Kendo, please check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't, take a second, please, Hit the like button. It really lets me know that you're enjoying these videos. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, if you would like to keep getting Kendo tips, and please share this video with someone you want their Kendo to improve. Thank you very much for watching.